think about it day and night I feel like the king of the game Ladies and gentlemen, guys and dolls, cats and chicks, you're listening to Viva ENT. This is your host, Johnny the Capo. I'm live on the radio in Seattle, and I have a couple of guest co-hosts today. And my first co-host guest is... Shauna Stewart. Shauna Stewart. And my other co-host, co-co-host is... The fabulous Jill Most. I like the fabulous Jill Most. And the... Most excellent producer in the city is... Hey, good afternoon. It's Eric C.C. Ryder. C.C. Ryder. Right, Welcome, Eric. Sean and Hello, Jill. Eric. Good to see you. <laughs> yes, it's nice to have a couple of chicks in the, in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we have a lot to talk about uh, today on our show. And if you're listening to our show for the very first time, ladies and gentlemen, you know that we have the celebrity guest every single week on our show from the rock era, and this is no exception today. We have a huge guest. He was a huge star uh, from the Donna Reed TV show, 1958 to 1966, Paul Peterson. Yeah, he and was several hits as a singer as well. Correct. He so was, he was one of those uh, double threats. Yeah. Singer, actor. Double trouble. I'll tell you, you know, uh, uh, back in the day, his picture was on every teen magazine there was. You know, just, Tiger Beat. Tiger, exactly. Ooh, Tiger uh, Beat. Ooh, Tiger Beat. <laughs> I remember that. Do you really? Yeah. Okay, so, and I want to thank last week's guest, Chris Montez. What a, what a guest he was. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he's a great raconteur and uh, just all-around good guy and, and, of course, big hits like Let's Dance. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I uh, remember a few dances with that. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So, uh, you know, uh, uh you know, he he was fortunate enough to be part of that 1960s right L.A. hit. Oh, toured with the Beatles. Toured with the Beatles. He was the opening act for the Beatles. Right. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I was watching a movie uh, on Netflix the other night, and I've seen it before, um, The Wrecking Crew. And we talked about it on a show before. Great movie. Hal Blaine, all those cats, uh, Glenn Campbell, Herb Alpert, uh, and... Um, you know, Chris Montez was part of that thing, the wrecking crew with all those great musicians on record. You know what I mean? So, and now, uh, today, ladies and gentlemen, I do want to talk real quick about, hmm, Bride's Club. Yeah. You know about Bride's Club, I don't you? I know about Bride's Club. Tell me, tell me what you know. What do I know? Yes, ma'am. It's been an amazing adventure with them. Oh. I mean, they, they are one of the, I guess, larger shows. Yes, Perfect. absolutely. It's it's a first class uh, uh, show, it's, and it's quite large. Uh, uh, no question about it. Yeah. And how long have you been doing the Bride's Club show now? I've been doing the Bride's Club show for this is going on my second year. Oh, cool. With them, ladies but... and gentlemen, you're listening to Jill Most. She's one of our premier photog- wedding photographers in Seattle. And so you dig doing the the bridal expos. You know that uh, you know the value of meeting clients at the shows, face to face. Absolutely. Eye to eye, they look right in your eyeballs and they say, "Baby, no, no, no." They do no, <laughs> but the thing is, when when we have millennials now, so everybody either is listening to the radio or they're doing things online, or yeah, um, there's just ways that they're reaching out instead of what we used to, like you know, way back in the day, we used to do a lot more of the. Um, we find somebody on the side of the street, like their big shop, you know, as we're walking past them. There's not as many photographers that do that anymore. But being at the Brides Club, the brides and grooms come in, and all the couples, but we actually get to meet them. Right. So it's a different thing than seeing somebody online, oh, great, I love your images. But right. when you get to talk to them, yeah. it's a big you know, deal for them because this is the person that's going to be around you all day. Do you and, like them? Do you not? Exactly. And you know what? You hit the nail on the head there, Jill, because you want them to hire you if they like you. If they don't like it, you certainly don't want them to hire you. <laughs> yeah, majority of the time it is, yeah, but it's also good for us as photographers. I mean, we get to kind of figure out if we like them as well. It's that's not correct. it's a two-way street. You know, like you don't want somebody coming in that's really abrasive and you just want to take their money. And what Obviously, that? you got to have a connection with them. Wedding photography, it's it's an investment. We're not the mandatory part of the wedding. I mean, your uncle Joe or whoever has a new camera. 
can potentially take all those pictures, but how much do you want to actually invest into your wedding? I mean, you're putting all your time and hard-earned money into these large events, and it's all pending on up to you if you want to invest into the photographer. So, I mean, depending on experience and how long we've been in the industry, what kind of art you like, mm-hmm. that's where it all kind of ranges to. So yeah, that, that, That's what I admire about your product is that you actually put a little time behind it. You put thought behind it. To you, it is an art. It is. It's a passion. There you go. So I'm, I'm lucky. It's not just a career, but it's something I love to do. I love each one of my couples for their own reasons. We have our own journey. And that's a little bit of a difference. I, I like the journey thing. <laughs> that's awesome. When you can take them down and, and captivate, you know, their interest and you get to know them. And that's what I think the Brides Club really does is it allows you that time one-on-one to get to know your client. It really it's does. It's absolutely awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Shauna, uh, she did the Brides Club shows, the wedding expos for years and years. And now you're, you're living in Chicago. And Between Chicago and Texas, yeah. Well, cool. So, uh so you know the value, too, of those wedding expos. Oh, my goodness, yes. I would I would tell any business, if you want to advertise, that's the way to go because that gives you your one-on-one pers- you know, personal touch. And, you know, it's one thing to get to talk to somebody over the phone and, mm-hmm. you know, get to present your product. But when you can actually make that connection, there's just not anything that can take the place of that. It really isn't. I, I, I love the Brides Club for many years, and that's where I met Johnny. That's right, Johnny the Capo. <laughs> now, uh... Jill, yes. what we're going to do right now is we're going to take this portion of the show to tell our listeners about your photography, what you do. And, and you know, uh, I really know that you put your heart and soul into it. So it's a little bit different from other photography companies. Some other photography companies have a different approach, but your approach is really the personal thing, which is, I think, is fabulous. Well, it's a little, like to me, it's about the experience. Like, it goes back to I love what I do. I love my clients. We have what I call the quote unquote journey. journey? I hear about their stories. Every story I hear, it, it's sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, it hasn't gotten old for me. I mean, you know, yeah, granted, everybody has their story. Oh, it's not that, you know, big of a deal, but it is. It's part of who they are. Um, I hear that a lot, that my work is a little bit different, but I love having. My brides and grooms and all my couples have the experience. I mean, this is a new chapter in your life, and you're supposed to enjoy every moment of it as much as you can. And I'm in this industry for a reason. If I didn't really care about what I did, then I would be doing something completely different. But um, I don't know. Like I like I told you at the bride show last time we were there, 10 years ago, if you asked me if I was going to be doing wedding photography, I would have laughed. I would have <laughs> been like, it's not going to happen. I hear it's stressful. I hear this and that. But doing more and more weddings and just how I felt into it after I graduated from the Art Institute and just I have a passion for photography and the arts but um, just kind of going with the flow I ended up where I am and I love it I don't stress out on the big moments I mean I've seen some pretty doozies happen in some weddings but you know everybody got through it and now they laugh about it and you know there's all these small things that some people really freak out about but in reality um, it's just another day it's not it's not the end of the world oh, and correct. everybody gets through it and let's have some fun with it enjoy it i mean that's oh. what the whole wedding experience is supposed to be i uh, used to say that it was always really nice because you know they they would stress you know the couples would do. stress and you would say you know what it's not it's like you said it's not a stressful day it's just enjoy it it'll be what it's going to be yeah. and that's when the photographers really come in with your talent and you capture those moments yeah. that would never be captured in any other way. And that's always a very, yeah. very unique way to complete their journey. Yeah, and that goes back to the, the journey that I take with them. So I know them before the big day. You know, like I know what kind of makes them tick, what makes them smile, what relaxes the bride. You know, I ask them different things. So once we're at the actual wedding day, then it turns into, okay, if she's stressing out, I could kind of see it a bit. Let's bring her back to reality and let's talk about, you know, something that's going to get her a little bit calm. Let's talk about when we did something for the engagements that makes her laugh. It's not, you know, um, as stressful as a lot of people think. I guess it is it is a tough industry. I mean, we do deal with some random things. You deal with, uh, basically deal with a lot of different personalities. We do. I, I mean, I can blend pretty good. <laughs> I can, you know, I get along with the majority of people and I don't let a lot of things affect me. I mean, um, 
when it comes to my art, my art's a little bit different. It's a lot more adventurous. I like oh. climbing to the top of mountains. I go in the water <laughs> with my couples. So those things I find fun, um, but it's not for every bride. Not every bride is enticed by the specific things that I shoot. They just want your traditional, um, very formal, posed in um, specific ways, which obviously I can do, but um, I, I just prefer to have fun, yeah. energetic couples that want to have art. That's what so. makes it nice about the uh, wedding expo because you can kind of uh, see what clients you want to work with. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Uh, so if it's a nice fit and and you feel comfortable, you know, w- with my company, I, you know, I have I have a team of DJs. Mm-hmm. So uh, if my personality doesn't fit with them, which sometimes it doesn't, uh, I do have a DJ that will. Yeah, I've met quite a few of your DJs, actually. They're pretty fun. Yeah, so. I would say. Otherwise, if they're not there, they're not with me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, you know, uh, we are going to uh, hear a word from our sponsors uh, momentarily, and then Sean is going to be on, and she's going to tell Yay. our listeners about her new CD, and we're going to play a little cut from it, uh, too. So... Um, Mr. C.C. Ryder? How about we uh, play a little bit of Paul Peterson That'll as be cool. well as we go to break here to get uh, wet people's appetites for I'm a, I'm our right. conversation yeah. with Paul coming up right. at the uh, half hour today. I like it. What song are we doing? We're going to do a song called Linda. Okay, cool. Hi. Is your vehicle needing some attention? Take it over to Maddie's Tuning and Shoreline for fast, affordable car care. Trusted, professional, Maddie's services all makes and models and has been trusted in the Puget Sound for almost 60 years. Call Brian Maddie at 206-364-3347 or stop by his convenient location in Shoreline right on Aurora at 152nd. Maddie's Tuning. Call 206-364-3347. Trusted for almost 60 years to keep you safe and on the road. Brides, do you want your big day to be stress-free, perfect, and stay within your budget? Well, Brides Club has all the inside information to make your dream a reality. Go to bridesclub.com. That's bridesclub.com. See upcoming bridal shows and events, view wedding vendors and special offers. And don't miss The Spotlight, the premier online wedding magazine with valuable articles you can't afford to miss. Brides Club helps make your wedding stress-free and perfect. Go to bridesclub.com. Check out bridesclub.com. This is Johnny the Gangster with Viva Productions, King of Entertainment. One-stop shop for all your entertainment needs. We have DJ service for weddings, corporate, and private events. Throw your guests with Vegas Nights Casino Party, Blackjack, Craps, Roulette, Poker, and more. We also have event photography and limousine service. Call Viva Productions, 206-542-5733, or find us at viva-productions.com. A little less conversation, a little more action, you got it. Call Johnny the Gangster, I'll make you a deal you can't refuse. Dr. Amanda Wong and the team at Art of the Smiles provides comprehensive dental services at affordable prices. Their convenient location in Federal Way and their extended hours fits the needs of both families and working professionals. Whether it's transforming your smile through some of their cosmetic therapies or simply having your teeth clean, Art of the Smiles provides individualized care plans that address your priorities and needs. Visit artofthesmiles.com or call 253 253- 839-4048 That's 253-839-4048 For same day scheduling Most insurance is accepted From cosmetic procedures to implant placement Molar root canals treatment Or wisdom teeth extractions Life's a celebration Grand Event Rentals makes your event their top priority They are your full service Special event and party rental provider Supplying everything you need From start to finish Their professional sales team and event staff work with you to create your dream event. With every event, 
like Rand Event Rentals, customers' needs are the most important. Whether you're planning an intimate outdoor wedding or an elaborate black tie gala, the Grand Event Rental Specialists make great pride in providing our event planning experience to help create an unforgettable event. Please go and visit the Bellevue Showroom, Grand Event Rentals, or make a one-on-one -on -one appointment. Talk to them. They're trained, they're knowledgeable, they're event specialists, and they are going to take you through step-by-step -step everything that you need to make your day a success. Call Grand Event Rentals. Their number is 425-462-7368 or go to GrandEventRentalsLaw.com. Attention business owners, experience a new world of business with Barter. The Saturn Barter Company located in Tacoma is one of the most beneficial business decisions you can make. Using Saturn Barter, you are able to sell your products or services to other members of the exchange. You can then use that credit you've built up from your sales to purchase the products or services you or your company needs from other companies within Saturn Barter, all without the use of cash. Contact and join Saturn Barter Club today, 253-212-9930 or online at SaturnBarter.com. Life's a celebration. Grand Event Rentals makes your event their top priority. They are your full service, special event, and party rental provider, supplying everything you need from start to finish. Their professional sales team and event staff work with you to create your dream event. With every event, Grand Event Rentals customers' needs are the most important. Whether you're planning an intimate outdoor wedding or an elaborate black tie gala, the Grand Event Rental Specialists make great pride in providing our event planning experience to help create an unforgettable event. Please go and visit the Bellevue Showroom, Grand Event Rentals, or make a one-on-one -on -one appointment. Talk to them. They're trained, they're knowledgeable. They're event specialists, and they are going to take you through step-by-step -step everything that you need to make your day a success. Call Grand Event Rentals. Their number is 425-462-7368, or go to GrandEventRentalsLaw.com. There's a reason they invented the Internet. It's called 1150kknw.com. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening to ENT. -E this is Johnny the Capel, and I have my great co-host with me, Shauna and Jill. Hey, my hey. excellent, my excellent producer, Mister. Hey, it's Eric C. C. Ryder. And 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 Shauna is a musician, singer, songwriter, singer, songwriter. Uh -huh. Very good. And we're going to play a, a cut of, of hers right now. My new one. Her new is cut. My new, this is my CD release, everybody. This, this is her debut in Seattle. Do you want to tell us what the song is called? It's called Run Around Girl. Oh, my gosh. And it's really about, it's a message in it that I hope everyone gets. It's really about women and about how women are very busy and they're in, you might find them anywhere, but they are um, deserve to be respected. Cool. Well, let's play the track and then you can tell us where people can get it. Okay. So very, very nice guys, you're so crazy, that's a lot they are. Gotcha, just need a rubber. Look at that girl, so smart, so sexy, she'll make you look twice, she's so full of life. She's a, a mother, a sister, look out mister, approach her the wrong way, she might have to dismiss you. No time for stress, no worries, no strife, always on the go on the free of life. Thought I had a beef with the girl, was much faster, run around girl, I call it the track master. Track master. Check it, she's an exec, even a technician Got a tall statue, but with perfect dimensions So full of praise, fellas asking for a taste Always in control, by the seat like a nace You never know, she ran her own show Run around, girl, never stop, always go You're all good if you get her in your world Keep your cardio tight, cause she's that run around girl Sexy and sweet, but in the back of her mind, she's got kind of 
not attached to me. She's fast and smooth, always on the move. While maintaining the groove, she stops the whole room. A sister, a mother, watch out, brother. Spitting the right game, she might make you her lover. So if you ever get this girl in your world, keep your cardio tight, cause she's that runaround girl. Cha-cha, lock down the damn line. Ooh, what is fine? Warm and sweet, cold and sweet. Ooh, that runaround girl. Okay, I like it. Um, Jill, what did you think about I it? I loved it. You have a great voice. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, Shauna, tell us all about your project, uh, The Runaround Girl. Well, it's been a long project, um, but it's actually, um, I'm glad that it's come full circle at this point. Very cool. I want to give a shout out to the rapper, Tez, mm -hmm. um, that we featured on there. Couldn't have done it without him. Great guy. And um, it's just, a, a, I wrote it behind my daughter. Really? And I wrote it when I was still here in Seattle. And um, it's just really, it's my baby. It's your baby. You rock it? Yeah, I rock it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. I'm really glad you liked it. I tried to do it a little bit upbeat. Everybody said, you doing rap, R&B, really? I was like, well, you know, I have a lot of talent. So I was just real fortunate that um, the song was came to me and I wrote it and my daughter inspired it. So your your but your background you you've been in the music industry a long time. Uh, what is your original influence? I mean, this is a a great song. Uh, it, it sounds contemporary, uh, but you have performed other styles, correct? I have. I um, I've been in the music industry for thirty five years. Oh no no I, I, <laughs> really. And when I first came to Seattle, I everyone knew me as a promoter. You're supposed to say 15. <laughs> I, know, I know, I know. So, you know, for all you people out there listening, okay, you knew I lied if I'd said 15. But um, So, anyway, um, in Seattle, they really knew me as a promoter. They didn't know me as a singer. So I had a yeah. really hard time trying to um, prove myself. But I was fortunate. I had a couple of really good people in the industry that cool. helped me. Mm -hmm. And um, But my, my love and where my start began was gospel, southern gospel. I see. Like a Swing Low, Sweet Chariot type stuff? Oh, yeah. Definitely. How, how Great Thou Art type yes, stuff? Yes, that's my favorite song, actually, you know. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Come on, Dallas did a great job on it. <laughs> and, go ahead. Tell us more. Um, well, it's kind of hard to talk about me, but I like talking about you. <laughs> well, but anyway, um, the I talk song, about me every week. <laughs> <laughs> this song, um, I, I, I left Seattle for a sp period of time, but I've never really left Seattle. I still have a residence here. You have your heart and, and soul here. I do, and I come back and forth, and I love Seattle. And that's why I chose Seattle to be the first place to release it. Yeah. Um, they they will be able to get it through CD Baby in about four weeks, oh, and it'll be in Target and oh, all great. the major stores, Amazon. Cool. Um, it'll be merchandised through CD Baby. So the runaround girl is going to have her heart and soul all over the all over the place. I sure hope so. I say so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you got that on YouTube, right? Uh, if no, you not if yet. You get it up there, sister. It will be. Don't, it will be. Got to wait for that. Got to wait for that barcode. You know. <laughs> Forget about the barcode. Just get it up there. Now, is this part of a whole album, or is it just a single? It's just a single. single. Oh, and and yeah. I have a video, so it's a video set. So it's a, a video and a CD set that goes together. Cool. And so when you do put it up on YouTube, what shall people search? Shauna Stewart. Shauna Stewart. Okay, cool. I like Shauna Stewart. Yeah. Run Around Girl. Run Around Girl, Shauna Stewart, up on YouTube soon. 
You're going to, and, and your Facebook, uh, and do you have a website going with the with it so far? I will have. It's under construction right now. Okay. And um, so it will be coming up within the next few weeks as well. So by the time everything hits CD Baby, everything will be up and running, and they'll definitely be able to locate me. But if they want to get me now, hit me up on Facebook. I got copies. I can send them to you. Okay, cool. And, Video and, and CD set. And your Facebook is? Shauna Stewart. Very good. And that's spelled S H. A W N A and Stuart S T E W A R T. That'll do it, ladies and gentlemen. Shauna Stewart, check out Run Around Girl. I think I'm going to write a song called Run Around Guy. No. I, I have another one I need coming to hear out. That one. No, forget about <laughs> it. Any relation to Run Around Sue? Could be. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. Here's my story, sad but true. <laughs> Anyway, I'm looking forward to getting uh, Paul Peterson on the air here with yes, Jerry Osborne. So am I. You know, Donna Reed, way before uh, Jill's time. Oh, wait, my wait. gosh. You guys, I'm not that young. Uh, maybe. It's moisturizer. It's okay, though. <laughs> moisturizer. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, uh, I remember the Donna Reed show. I was just a little bit of a thing. You know, I, I could barely, you know, talk it, you know, but I remember the show. And way before your time, CC Ryder. Yeah, well before my time. But, you know, I've seen it on TV land. And, oh, yeah. And stuff like that. Yeah, you know, the cool thing about you, too, is you do have a nice knowledge of the, the oldies, uh, you know, since you worked for that oldie station and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I try to be well versed in culture from the last hundred years or so. So from the Donner Beach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Even yeah. if it was before my time. Quite cultured. Uh, on the Donna Reed show, of course, they had Donna Reed, the big star of the show, mm -hmm. who was a major movie star before she had the TV show. And then Carl Betts was her um, TV husband. Shelley Fabres, who went on to be quite successful. She made three movies with Elvis, Clambake, Girl Happy, and there was one more. Mm, I got it. I'm going to think. You're you're the get king of Elvis. Girl, Trivia. happy, you, you know, big, and there was oh, spin out. There you Let go. You spin out. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't we take a, a quick break? We'll hear a little bit more of Paul Peterson as we go to break. Okay. And when we come back, we'll have Jerry Osborne and Paul Peterson on the line with us. You mean we're going to have the big O on the radio, man? Well, there you go. Okay, brother. <laughs> this is Viva ENT. Everybody, stay tuned. Stay at home when I go away Don't waste your time with letters each day You can have fun and see everyone that you want to see Just keep all your love locked Deep in your heart, deep in your heart And don't give the key to anyone else but me Dr. Amanda Wong and the team at Art of the Smiles provides comprehensive dental services at affordable prices. Their convenient location in Federal Way and their extended hours fits the needs of both families and working professionals. Whether it's transforming your smile through some of their cosmetic therapies or simply having your teeth clean, Art of the Smiles provides individualized care plans that address your priorities and needs. Visit artofthesmiles.com or call 253 253- 839-4048 That's 253-839-4048 For same day scheduling Most insurance is accepted From cosmetic procedures to implant placement Molar root canals treatment Or wisdom teeth extractions Brides, do you want your big day to be stress free Perfect and stay within your budget Well Brides Club has all the inside information To make your dream a reality Go to bridesclub.com That's bridesclub.com See upcoming bridal shows and events, view wedding vendors and special offers, and don't miss The Spotlight, the premier online wedding magazine with valuable articles you can't afford to miss. Brides Club helps make your wedding stress-free and perfect. Go to bridesclub.com, check out bridesclub.com. 
Is your vehicle needing some attention? Take it over to Maddie's Tuning in Shoreline for fast, affordable car care. Trusted, professional, Maddie's services all makes and models and has been trusted in the Puget Sound for almost 60 years. Call Brian Maddie at 206-364-3347 or stop by his convenient location in Shoreline right on Aurora at 152nd. Maddie's Tuning. Call 206-364-3347. Trusted for almost 60 years to keep you safe and on the road. Life's a celebration. Grand Event Rentals makes your event their top priority. They are your full service, special event, and party rental provider, supplying everything you need from start to finish. Their professional sales team and event staff work with you to create your dream event. With every event, Grand Event Rentals customers' needs are the most important. Whether you're planning an intimate outdoor wedding or an elaborate Black Peg Gala, the Grand Event Rental Specialists make great pride in providing our event planning experience to help create an unforgettable event. Please go and visit the Bellevue Showroom, Grand Event Rentals, or make a one-on-one -on -one appointment. Talk to them. They're trained. They're knowledgeable. They're event specialists, and they are going to take you through step-by-step -step everything that you need to make your day a success. Call Grand Event Rentals. Their number is 425-462-7368, or go to GrandEventRentalsLaw.com. Attention business owners, experience a new world of business with Barter. The Saturn Barter Company located in Tacoma is one of the most beneficial business decisions you can make. Using Saturn Barter, you are able to sell your products or services to other members of the exchange. You can then use that credit you've built up from your sales to purchase the products or services you or your company needs from other companies within Saturn Barter, all without the use of cash. Contact and join Saturn Barter Club today, 253-212-9900 or online at saturnbarter.com. Life's a celebration. Grand Event Rentals makes your event their top priority. They are your full service, special event, and party rental provider, supplying everything you need from start to finish. Their professional sales team and event staff work with you to create your dream event. With every event, Grand Event Rentals customers' needs are the most important. Whether you're planning an intimate outdoor wedding or an elaborate Black Peg Gala, the Grand Event Rental Specialists make great pride in providing our event planning experience to help create an unforgettable event. Please go and visit the Bellevue Showroom, Grand Event Rentals, or make a one-on-one -on -one appointment. Talk to them. They're trained, they're knowledgeable, they're event specialists, and they are going to take you through step-by-step -step everything that you need to make your day a success. Call Grand Event Rentals. Their number is 425-462-7368 or go to GrandEventRentalsLaw.com. Going our own way every day. Alternative Talk 1150. Understand that's how it should be. But darling, keep all your love deep in your heart, deep in your heart, and don't give the key to anyone else but me. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Viva ENT. That voice you just heard is the voice of Paul Peterson, who is our special guest today. This is Johnny the Capo. We're live in Seattle. I'm with my co-host, Shauna Jill, my producer, Mr. Eric C.C. Ryder, my talent coordinator, Mr. Jerry O. Please bring on Paul on the show, pal. Well, I would love to, and in fact... It's because I was uh, hell-bent to do that that we finally got him here. <laughs> and so, Paul, I'm so grateful to have you. The people are really going to enjoy hearing what you have to say and finding out a little more about not only what you did then, but what you're doing now, which is probably nearer and dearer to your heart, maybe, than anything you've ever done. So we're just going to kick it off uh, chronologically, I guess you could say, because I'd like to go back and find out how you ever got on the Mickey Mouse Club, because you don't have those ears or anything, do you? No, I don't. Uh, when I was nine years old, they had an open audition. This is in the spring of 1955. Wow. And my dance teacher, Sally Sargent, had my mom take me over to Disney Studios, and there were about 5,000 kids there, literally 5,000. Wow. But I could sing and dance, and they allowed me to do my routine, and they didn't holler at me and say, <laughs> next, uh, what they did was hire me. And uh, I was a Mouseketeer for all of seven weeks before they fired me for conduct unbecoming mouse. Boy, this is a good time like you. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, I was an undisciplined nine-year-old all-American boy who liked baseball and getting in fights and, and table tennis. 
And it uh, amazed me that all of these young children I was with, uh, I, I thought they loved mirrors too much, and they didn't know how to throw a ball. And uh, <laughs> I just really didn't fit in. So basically, uh, all the other child stars in, on the Musketeer Club were all checking themselves out in the mirror, and you wanted to go out and play baseball, right? <laughs> well, I, look, these were professional children. Right. Uh, and by and large, uh, of the entire troop over the two and a half years of the of the show, uh, most of them were, were solid professionals and certainly highly trained. Right. And so how long were you on the show now? Uh, seven entire weeks. I lasted past the opening of Disneyland, which, remember, that was part of the purpose of the show, was right. to promote Disneyland. And um, then I punched uh, the big old fat casting guy named Lee Travers in the stomach when he kept calling me Mouse <laughs> and said, don't call me that fat so." And standing behind Lee Travers was Mr. Disney. Oh, my God. And I was, that afternoon, discharged. That's got to be the youngest pink slip in history. <laughs> I mean, think Maybe. about it. Well, but, you know, here's the funny part. I have stayed friends with and very close to several of the Mouseketeers. And, uh, you know, life goes on. Uh, after the Donna Reed show, my first movie uh, was called Happiest Millionaire for Walt Disney. You uh -huh. don't get hired there unless Walt said okay. Cool. And he and I had several laughs about this. Uh, I was proud to be back uh, on the Disney lot and working in Walt's last movie. You were proud to be the first uh, Musketeer fired. <laughs> oh, I, I brag about it all the time. In fact, my tenth book was a book called Walt, Mickey, and Me, Confessions of an Ex-Musketeer. <laughs> yeah, I love the cover of that book, by the way. No no Thank cheese you. for you, pal. No cheese for you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly okay, but you so. mentioned that you stayed in touch with some of the uh, Mouseketeers, uh, name names. Who, who did you continue being friends and oh, close well, to? I, my, my wife and I are very close to Tommy Cole uh -huh. and his wife and um, uh, um, Bobby Burgess. Yes. And Doreen Tracy uh -huh. and Darlene Gillespie and, of course, Annette until she passed away because Annette and Shelley Fabre were best of friends. Oh, wow. I know. And well, of course, I, you know, I, Johnny, I love Johnny Crawford. Johnny Crawford came through there as yes. well. And uh, he and I got pretty close when he was doing Rifleman. And Cubby O'Brien, I've talked with several times. Uh, and, I, you know, I run into people uh, because of uh, the foundation work I do. Well, that's a connection that uh, is, is bound to bring you together. Cubby uh, was the drummer for the Carpenters, I think. Wow. Absolutely. And, and he played behind uh, Cher with her Vegas act. He is an accomplished drummer, as was his dad and his grandfather. Marvelous. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so you when know, did you start was, recording I, then uh, after the, the Mouseketeer gig? Well, yeah, we, I had done several things in between, you know, pretty big projects like um, you know, Playhouse 90 and Lux Video Theater and Ford Theater. And, oh, and Houseboat. And I did a, a big movie with uh, Cary Grant and Sophia Loren called Houseboat. Yeah. That was in 57. And then the next year we started the Donna Reed Show. Uh, uh, we, well, we used Bastille Day as our start date, and, you know, there I was for the next eight years. And just like Ricky Nelson, who set the template for kids on television shows, uh, they asked Shelley and I to uh, sing for Cold Picks. Uh, Shelley was reluctant, and I couldn't wait because I could see that, you know, Ricky was getting the girls and drove fast cars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, she Shelley did pretty well. Uh, uh, oh, she did do you think? Yeah, I think, yeah. <laughs> Johnny Angel was a monster hit, yeah. Yeah. which is fun. And all the movies know, with that guy, what's his name, Presley? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. El Elvis something, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, she did more movies with Elvis than any other actress, you know, three altogether. That's correct. And, That's then, awesome. you know, it's interesting that you started uh, the show off with uh, Keep Your Love Locked. Did you ever look to see who wrote that song? No. It'll make you nuts. <laughs> it's Carol King. No kidding. Well, yes, yes, I knew that. Yeah, isn't that something? Yeah, and you know, it's almost like a, a female doo-wop type background, which is one of the things that drew me to it back when it was first out. I mean, I loved it immediately. Oh, uh, me too. But look, I've been the luckiest guy. I, I've had people like Brian Wilson write uh, write a song for me. Uh, uh, Barry Manson. Yeah, yeah, she rides with me exactly. Yeah. But best of all were my my good friends Barry Mann and Cynthia Wheel, who wrote my dad. 
You know, oh. Barry had written uh, that song for his father when he passed away. They changed the tense so it wasn't past tense, so I could sing it to Carl Betts on the show. <laughs> and it's far and away the most successful record uh, I had. Oh, yeah, the top ten all over. Didn't uh, Barry yeah, Mann I, uh, write uh, You Lost That Love and Feeling, too? Am I wrong? Yeah, but that's right. And, yeah. uh, and another little song like... Um, uh, uh, on Broadway is uh, another one that oh, they wrote. Okay. I mean, I think he, I think in Barry's office, I tried to count uh, his number one gold records and lost track after seventy. What was uh, oh, Barry's? Uh, 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 pardon me. What was Barry's song writing partner? Was that Cynthia? Well, well, Cynthia, it, that it, his it, wife. Most of the time, yes. He also wrote occasionally with other people. But yeah, the, you know, the right. biggest song ever has got to be "You've Lost That Loving Feeling." Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. Smash. Although I must say, I like who put the bump in the bump, she bump, she bump. Who put the bump in the bump? Sixty-one. Yeah. yeah. She she can't find her keys. Great song. So uh, yeah, it, it was a fun song, and you know, as I get older and have, of course, being a, married for a long time, uh, that is the truth of every man's existence. My wife, I don't know what happens to her. She will not put her keys in the same place all the time. <laughs> I beg your pardon, sir. <laughs> if you were doing that song now, you would be talking about things like cell phones. Right. <laughs> Ain't it so? What a world we're living in. <laughs> so, uh, Paul, did you uh, have a chance to uh, record with some of those uh, uh, artists from the early 60s, the Wrecking Crew guys? Uh, no, I actually didn't. Uh, we had uh, pretty strong backup people, um, and I'm trying to remember the people with the Righteous Brothers who uh, uh, escorted me on stage because I was so anxious uh, the first uh, appearance was that the, uh, the, over the, the Isle of Wreck. Phil Spector guys? Uh, uh, yeah, it was um, Bill and, and um, uh, gosh, what was Bill's partner's name? I can't think of it. Bobby Hatfield. Um, Bobby, thank you. Yeah. Uh, they, I was a wreck at the uh, uh, Olive Recreation Center, and they had to walk me out and get me started. Wow. Of course, I paid them back when we did Shindig together, because <laughs> back there on the piano was old man Russell banging away. <laughs> was, uh, you're not talking about... Uh, um Let's see. Who was the piano player for Shindig? That was Billy, Billy Preston. Billy Preston was there too. Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 I, I was. I was on a show. And maybe Leon Russell. The, I'm thinking. You're and, thinking and Leon the Russell. The Supremes were there, and right. um, it was. Oh, and Donna Lauren, of course. Mm -hmm. Bobby Sherman. A uh, lot, lot of buddies. A lot of buddies. Glenn, Glenn Campbell uh, uh, debuted on that show. Yeah, well, Glenn Campbell played guitar on my sessions. Uh -huh. um, in oh. fact, one of my favorite stories, uh, when I signed with with Motown, this writer walked in uh, to the offices with a song, and his name was Jimmy Webb, and he said, I think this is just <laughs> a perfect song for you, and I'm listening to it, and we're the only two white guys there, you can imagine. And uh, I listened to the song and said, no, no, I don't. I know. I want. I want some upbeat stuff. You know, more Motown sound. And and of course, Glenn Campbell recorded. Uh, by the time I get to Phoenix, <laughs> good decision. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I've had a few of those in my life. I always wanted to say, if I had a chance to talk to you, and now I do, how much I loved the strings. And it was a bit unusual uh, for, at that time for your records, and maybe a lot of people's. But there's a great string section on Amy that just oh, jumped absolutely. out at me as being spectacular when I first heard it. Well, and that, that's all thanks to Stu Phillips. Uh, he was our A&R guy. And, then, you know, this is a brilliant man, a musician through and through, cool. uh, uh, Juilliard trained. Uh, and when he did, the, well, Amy specifically, that is one of my favorite songs. Uh, because I really, I, I could feel it. And remember, we weren't doing uh, 32 tracks. But you did it pretty much live in studio, and we could do three songs, sometimes four, in our three-hour recording session. Man, you know, you're absolutely right about that. You know, um, I'm going to ask my co-host, uh, Shauna Stewart, if she has a, a question for you, Paul. Go ahead, Shauna. Sure. Hi, Sean. Hi, Shauna. She's a she's Shana. a Shana. <laughs> they it. get it wrong all the time anyway. But that's uh, all right, Shana. Uh, I'll remember. <laughs> oh, Shana. What was what was your favorite uh, Mouseketeer um, escapade that happened? 
other than getting well, fired. <laughs> the, the, one that always sticks, the one that always sticks out in my mind, and they put it on the highlight reels all the time, is I was a kind of brave kid and very athletic, and we had some uh, circus performers come on. And uh, these were the people, you know, stand on each other's shoulders and stuff. And when they asked for volunteers to climb up on top of a three-stack, I couldn't wait. I just scrambled right up the backs of three people, and there I am, you know, 25 feet above the stage floor. I always thought that was a kick. <laughs> That's Sound, awesome. Sounds so like I a gotta, kick. I got to ask you, what made you go into this? Like, what was it? You you obviously were a young child. Was it just your, your parents brought you to an audition one time, or was it something that you just, hey, I, I want to try it out to be a Mouseketeer? Let, let me tell you the truth, and most kid actors don't say it this way. Right. I went to that first audition because my mother was bigger than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I've had some great friends. I remember Daryl Hickman said to me one day, I asked my mother, how come I got started in the business when I was two years old? And she was a very grand lady, and she said, why, darling, because you wanted to. <laughs> oh, okay. So you were young then. Early young. Well, yes, young enough. But, you know, I was already singing professionally around Los Angeles at the Hollywood Bowl and various uh, churches and, and uh, Wadsworth Theater over at the VA because uh, without tooting my own horn, because after all, this is more than 60 years ago, I was pretty damn good. All right. I That's like it. Awesome. We could see that. We knew that. So, uh, so, 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 Paul. Um, so, was your mom in show business? No, not at all. We uh, they, we come from a Lockheed family. My mom, my dad, both grandfathers uh, worked uh, at Lockheed. Uh -huh. But here's the problem: we we lived in North Hollywood, Correct. which is dangerously close to Hollywood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there was that. Uh, there was just that uh, opportunity in the air. Well, that's correct. Uh, you know, my mom believed in uh, improving on God's gifts, so my sisters and I were subjected to endless lessons, piano and tap and singing, uh, and uh, frankly, uh, it, it was important. The, the, the performing arts were important in my family. Even my grandfather, Grandpa Burr, uh, was a hell of a clarinet player, so it was just kind of the expected way to get out of the lower middle class. Wow. So what a great opportunity that was to be where all the energy was in L.A. Oh, well, yeah. Well, you know, I look back at it quite fondly because if I hadn't had those experiences, particularly the eight years on the Donna Reed show, I mean, that's a hell of a long time. Yeah, from it is. Yes. To 20, yeah. it, it colored my life absolutely. And during my 30s when I was trying to create a book career and getting into business, I always thought I, I had missed out on something, but now, for the last 20-some-odd years, running a minor consideration, which takes care of young performers, past and present cool. and future, uh, I see that um, God had a plan. And uh, it's because of my experiences that I am profoundly sympathetic to high-profile youngsters who, in many instances, in fact, in 49 out of 50 states, don't own the money they earn right. because children are chattel and in our country in america 2016 kids are exempt from federal child labor laws if they pick our crops or if they're in the entertainment business that's wrong so a big question for you is uh uh when you were on the donna reed show did you get paid uh properly Oh, yes, I did, as a matter of fact. You know, and look, I, my, my mission in, as a, a grown man uh, is, is not born out of some desperation because people beat me up or stole my money. <laughs> I'm a pretty straightforward, pesky kid, and uh, uh, nobody took advantage of me. I, and I try to tell people, well, Justin Bieber's people, for example, that, you know, Justin may think he's the first and only bubblegum star, <laughs> but, you know, I, 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 could, I could buy the world's most expensive car every three weeks. Okay, oh. and well, did I you? you like <laughs> I was going to ask that, did he? <laughs> what was your first car, Paul? Well, my first car was a 1933 Model A that I had to take apart and put together before my dad would let me get a driver's license. But then I had 348 Pontiacs. Uh, I guess the crowning car in my life, at least, was a 289 Cobra. 
Yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, and I was awesome. the pre- president cool. and founder of the Cobra Owners Club. And um, I love that car. Do you still have it? Oh, I, how, how I wish. Yeah. <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be talking to a millionaire if I still had it. Oh, my. Yes, absolutely. Very cool. Well, so, I, uh, here's a question that we often ask our guests uh, who are <laughs> part and parcel <laughs> to the golden era, and that is, you had two records in a row that both mentioned Elvis. What did they do before <laughs> rock and roll? And she can't find her keys. Oh, about that. Wow, what, what a connection. So, <laughs> I had so, so did you that. ever meet the man? Oh, yes, several times. You know, Tell us. Shelley... Uh, well, first of all, we both had our hair cut at J.C. Brings. So, oh, yes, uh, we were, I, I know, you know Jay, yes. We, we were running into each other all the time, and Shelley doing the movies, uh, she said, Paul, you got to see the transformation that comes over Elvis when he sings. <laughs> and I was on hand to watch him, and it was. It was like a light bulb went off when the track started, and he's singing them. That's not the soft-spoken guy I just talked to. Yeah. It was remarkable. Yeah, you know, the movie Girl Happy, uh, the first movie she made with Elvis, was, mm-hmm. I, I think, one of uh, Presley's best efforts. It was a great movie. The soundtrack was great. Shelley yeah, was yeah. fabulous in that movie. And when she uh, appeared in the scene, uh, The Meanest Girl in Town, when yeah. she, and she was dancing around with that little uh, um, poster man, she was, she was hot. Oh, yeah, well, absolutely. <laughs> hey, she was uh, next to Annette, America's sweetheart uh, oh, yeah. in the day. And, and But, you know, I had so many fun experiences. I used to, uh, because I wasn't afraid to sing live, I would go on the road with the Dick Clark Caravan of Stars. Oh, you and I got to talk about that. Oh, well, I'm, we need another hour. No, but, no, we're, <laughs> we'll talk about that off the air. But I am yeah, seeing those shows. Well, you know, I had I have the privilege of uh, being on one bus with the Drifters, wow. the Supremes, wow. Tom Jones, Gene Pitney. Mm. Excuse me, what a privilege! That, that, I'd say I, I can give you some more names too, because like I said, I emceed those shows, and you were on one of the shows that I uh, did with Del Shannon, the Shangri Las, Mel Carter. Yep, yep, Oops. Jackie DeShannon. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. Okay, fellas, we're okay. down. We're down to three minutes. Paul, tell our listeners here in Seattle what's going on with your Facebook website. Do you have any books out? That well, type of thing. I, I, you can get a couple of my books on Amazon. You know, in their ebook form. Cool. Uh, I haven't written a book in a long time, but Walt, Mickey, and me, and the My Dad uh, Letters Collection are up on Amazon. So you can get that. Anybody can reach me through Facebook. I have something like four sites plus a minor considerations website. Uh, I'm an accessible person. I love to hear from people. Uh, we've all we have spent our lives growing up together, and now we're getting older well, together. Well, you know, you you had the fortune of catching that electricity, catching catching that lightning bolt. Uh, you know, in the excuse me, in the beginning of TV. And um, man, uh, you know, you, you really, you really had a great career. Well, well, thank you. I, it it uh, surprises me, but I was proud to serve. You know, there isn't a single episode of the Donna Reed Show, or any movie or television show I did that I have to be embarrassed about. I can show all of my work to my children, and I have. Wow. Oh, that's wonderful. Good, good By the way, I wanted to tell you, one of your compatriots from the good old days, James Darren, was our guest uh, a while back on the show. Uh, Jimmy's a great guy. You yep. know, it, it, what, what a remarkable lineup Colpix Records had. Oh, you and, got uh, it. And, and Stu Phillips uh, did the A&R for everybody, and, they, and, and had his own orchestra called the Holly Ridge Strings. That's right. So wow. it, it was great days. I'm still friends with Jimmy and his son. And uh, you know we have we've uh, gotten we have matured together. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Paul, thank you very much for being on our show. It's, it's been a pleasure. Hey, and pleasure uh, is all mine. Believe me, I love to reminisce. We we would like to get you back on the show, uh, you know, uh, soon, uh, so we can uh, do another half hour, man. <laughs> Lots Sounds of great stories for sure. Great. Thank you. Thank you for calling. It's a, my pleasure. It's a pleasure, sir. And, and I'll be calling you soon, Paul, to talk about a few other things. Jerry, tell, oh, tell our okay, listeners who's Jerry, coming I'm on the show. Do it. Pardon me? Tell, tell our listeners who's coming on the show next week. Oh, 
well, I'm still working uh, oh. on the, the surprise guest I told you about. So if that happens, you'll be the first to know. Not a bigger star than Paul. <laughs> well, it, it'll it'll be uh, from a different area. Let's put it like that. Okay, cool, man. <laughs> that was good. And then, uh, are we still working on DJ Fontana? Oh yeah, absolutely. He we, he will be back with us. We already know that. I just watched the movie The Wrecking Crew again for the like third time. We might get Hal Blaine back, and also we will have Ray Walker back too. Oh George man, Harris. let's get Ray and Hal ba uh, back on. Okay. I got I got questions to ask Hal uh, from the from the movie. All right, we'll do it. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank my co-host Joe Most, Shauna Stewart, my excellent producer Eric C C Ryder. This is Johnny the Cabo live on the radio in Seattle. We'll dig in now and see you later because you are fine. Sweet potato. Thank you for listening, folks. Keeping rock and roll alive in Seattle.